Sahabis who were actually addicted. There was uh, one of the Sahabis, his name is Abdullah, he was actually addicted to alcohol. And uh, they, they, the other Sahabi used to always push him and hit him because he used to do that because that's the way that they were disciplining him. One time of the Sahabi, he came and complained to the Prophet he said, look at this guy. You know, he's always addicted and things like that. He said, at least he's trying and because he loves Allah and his messenger. And then I made dua for him and he quit, he quit the addiction. There is also another story I would like to tell you about uh, about uh, one of the greatest scholars who used to be also addicted. And he talks about his story of recovery and story of his uh, uh, of his repentance. But before that, I would like to recite some of the ayahs of the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajim, bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Wallahu yuridu an yatuba alaykum wa yuridu alladhina yattabi'una shahawat Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah wants to accept your repentance, but those who follow their passions, their desires, because subhanAllah, this is how it starts. It starts with a desire. It starts with an idea, right? I want to try it. I'm very curious. So I take it, take a little bit. Tastes good. And then I have my friends who will encourage me for it, right? So I take another one, and then I take another one until it becomes an addiction. That's a desire. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, uh, but those who follow their desires want you to de digress into a great deviation. means to take the other route. Also another ayah says that, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُغَيِّرُ مَا بِقَوْمٍ حَتَّى يُغَيِّرُ مَا بِأَنفُسِهِمْ means like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not change the people unless they start changing on themselves. As Sister Javeria said, she said, you need to want it. You need to want it to change. It doesn't just change like this. Now, as, as Sister Kimberly, she said a very profound thing. She said, like, what do we do as people that we are hurt? When I went to a counselor, so she told me that, you know, uh, I have a family member that he is under, uh, you know, substance abuse. They told him, you know, just leave him. Uh, make him go to the like to the rock bottom. That's what they say. Like he has to stay to keep like to go to the rock bottom until he starts like thinking. But this person has been 16 years on the rock bottom and nothing changed. As she said, we said like we're supposed to be praying for them, making dua for them, that Allah guide them. And unfortunately, subhanAllah, as I said, there are so many brothers and sisters, they go to jail from, from Muslim brothers and sisters. They go to jail because of the, the substance abuse, because of the addiction. And not only that, because they start doing other haram stuff like stealing. Not to mention also that they have boyfriend, girlfriend. Not to mention that they are do, like, I, I heard about a story of a person that, subhanAllah, he used, I used to be his teacher in, a, an, in an Islamic school for like four or five years, subhanAllah, and now he's an adult, and he went downtown, I don't know what he was doing, and he shot somebody, shot somebody, and he's in jail because of that, subhanAllah, and he's a Muslim, he was in an Islamic school, you're talking about students who are in Islamic schools, P their parents paid money for them to be in an Islamic school. And of course, not all of that, like those are very low percentage, you know, of the community, but it is spreading among our uh, youth. So whose fault is that? Many times the parents start, you know, blaming themselves. It's like, is it my fault that I didn't know I didn't raise you right? Or is it the world really and the community uh, that that those you know, youth that they go to public schools or to colleges and things like that, they start trying things out and then they just get lost, right, in the process. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us, protect our Islamic ummah and Islamic community. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. So the last thing I want to tell you about a story of a very great scholar, his, ma his name is Malik bin Dinar, rahimahullah, may Allah have mercy on him. He was like a party guy. He goes and he has girlfriends. He would do uh, fahisha. He would do zina. He would do a lot of adultery things. He used to drink a lot of alcohol. He was an alcoholic uh, at the time when they have slavery. He said, I bought a slave woman and I had, I had intimacy with her and she had a daughter. I loved this daughter so much. And of course, like the, when the, you know, when the slave, uh, if, if it's in, in a Muslim house, she becomes a, a free woman.
And her daughter, of course, becomes a free woman. So he loved his daughter so much. So he said that uh, this daughter started like walking. And, uh, uh, and when I sit and drink alcohol, she would come and she wants me like she wants me to play with her. So he always like used to push her away. When she became like two years old, she became so sick that the, the daughter became so sick and she died. So he said, you know what? I'm going to drink until I die. That's what he said. Yes, he became like in depression. So he was about to commit suicide. He said, I'm going to drink until I die. Subhanallah. So he started drinking too much, drinking too much, drinking too much. And it was like in the nights of Shaban. That's what he said. He said, while I was sleeping, I saw a, a dream. And that dream was like a turning point for him. He said that I saw myself that it was a judgment day and I was resurrected from the grave and I saw a great snake was chasing me was going after me and I started running and running and running and I was so scared and then I said I saw a man that he was wearing all white and he was an elderly man he looked so sick and he was so weak so he came to this, to this elderly man and he said, Oh, ya sheikh, please help me out. Please help me out. I am in a, this snake is about to kill me, is about to swallow me. Help me. So the man said, he said, Ya waladi, oh my son, I am a very old man. And this snake is way greater and stronger than me. And I don't have any energy or any, uh, uh, any power to overcome this uh, snake. He started running more. This snake kept like chasing him and chasing him and chasing him until he reached to the hellfire. He saw the hellfire about to come this way and the snake was coming from that way. And then he say, he say, where are my people to help me out? Where are my intercessions? Like, you know, if I have anybody to help me out, subhanAllah. So he said, I went to a mountain and while I was in a mountain, I saw a lot of like like windows inside the mountains. Suddenly one of the windows opened and he saw a bunch of children. And guess who saw among those children? His daughter. He saw his daughter, Nam. She came down on a light and she hugged me. She came with her right hand and she hit the snake and the snake went away. And she came and she sat on his lab. And she said, Ya Abati. ألم يئن للذين آمنوا أن تخشع قلوبهم لذكر الله وما نزل من الحق؟ She said, isn't it time for you, for the ones who believed, to fear Allah and uh, from the remembrance of Allah and come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? He said, oh my daughter, and you know the Quran? She said, نحن أعرف به منكم. We know the Quran more than you. Now, she died while she was young. So, subhanAllah, she becomes, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take her to Jannah because she didn't do any sin or anything like that. She's innocent, right? قلت يا بنية ما تصنعونها هنا. He said, oh, my daughter, what are you doing here? She said, we are the children who died from the Muslims and we are sitting in this mountain until our parents come so we can intercede for them. He said, Ya Bunaya, what is this snake that is coming to swallow me? She said, this is your bad deeds. This is your bad deeds. They chase you in the, in the day of judgment. And then he asked her, what is this old man that I saw? The very old man, very weak. He sa she said, this is your good deeds. You made your bad deeds stronger than your good deeds. And that's why your, your good deeds could not overcome your bad deeds. SubhanAllah. So this is my like uh, message to everyone, whether for people who are addicted or not. Try as much as you can to do good and never give up. Even if you fall, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only helper for you. Oh, she told him that to repent to Allah and don't be among the ones they go to hellfire. She said, because it's going to come the time where I'm not going to be able to help you. I'm not going to be able to intercede for you. That's what she said. Subhanallah. He said, I woke up and that was my turning point. 
And at this time, I repented. And the repentance needs four things to do. The first thing is to admit that I did something wrong. Say, oh Allah, I did this some, something wrong. Second is to ask Allah for forgiveness. The third thing is not only to ask Allah, if there is something wrong that I did and I can't fix it, I go back and fix it. So for example, if I stole money and I repented, I should return that money. If I did something wrong towards someone and I, I backbite him or anything like that, I should go back and tell that person I backbite or try to fix it by saying something good about them instead of saying bad bad thing about them. Okay? Making dua, that's right. And the last thing and the fourth thing is not to go back to it. Repent. Not to go back to it. So these are the four things to repent. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us in this night to Make us repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inna huwa tawwab. He is the one who caused repentance. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us. If we have anybody like a family member or someone close to us who is addicted, to help us, give us the wisdom in how to, to, to deal with them, how to treat them, treat them right, in patience. Always encourage them to do the right thing. Always encourage them to do the right thing. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect our ummah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect our brothers and sisters who are suffering in this world. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect our identity as Muslim Americans here in America to be a light shining in this world. Ameen ya rabbal alameen. Jazakum la khair. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah al-azim. If I say something right, then it is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If I say something wrong, then it is from me and from shaitan. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. Jazakum la khair all for coming. I really appreciate you. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all. And uh, I love you all for the sake of Allah. And we'll see you next time. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.